Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from? Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. All right, let's get started. We're going to get on here. The Acts of the Apostles Church, the Jerusalem Church, but that's not what we're going to be speaking about. Real saints, real saints. So let's go over here to the prophets for a second, and then we're going to head on to the, and spend the rest of the day in the renewed covenant, okay? Yezekiel 11, 16 says, Therefore thus saith the Master Yahweh, although I have sent them far off among the what? The Gentiles, and although I have scattered them among the what? Lands. It's not y'all talking about his people? Is that right? Yet I was for them a set apart place for a little while in the lands to which they came. Yet, yet therefore say, thus saith the master Yahweh, I shall gather you from the peoples and I shall assemble you from the lands where you have been scattered and I shall give you the land of what? Israel, future prophecy, and they shall go there and shall take away all its disgusting matters and all these abominations from there. And I shall give them one heart. How many hearts y'all gonna give us? Y'all hear that? And, and don't tell me you got your way and I got my way. It's only one way, his way. And I will put a new spirit within you and I shall take away the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. So they will walk in my laws and guard my right rulings and shall do them and they shall be my people and I shall be the Elohim. But those whose heart walk after the heart of their what? Disgusting matters and their abominations. I shall recompense their deeds on their own heads, declares the master. Now in John 13, 34, Yahshua said a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another another but this by this all men shall know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another now let's look at the great deception here man tti 24 24 for there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders so when these false messiahs and false prophets come see right now these false people are not doing anything only a very small remnant of the assembly of israel is actually doing anything now you follow me? But there's coming a time that these false messiahs and stuff, that they are there and they're going to be doing lying signs and wonders. All right? And so much that if, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very, I mean the very, there's one thing to be elect. There's an elect in the Bible and then there's a very elect. Notice, but it says, look at this, in so much that if, it were possible. In other words, as long as you stay the very elect, it's not going to be possible for you to be deceived. Because this, this world is clamoring for signs and wonders. Every time somebody says somebody see one little sign, man, they go off on a deep end. Big time. All right? First Timothy 2 11. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to have authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived was in what transgression notwithstanding she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and in charity and holiness with sobriety so deception is what the enemy is going to use and he's going to go to the weakest link possible that's the reason why a lot of you men are experiencing a lot of hell in your home because satan is using the weaker vessel to try to bend you and force you to satan's will 
Today, we are dealing with religious apostates and deceivers. Some of these, uh, the greatest deceivers of today are those who are full of doubt, but their life does not produce any action of faith. You notice people are loaded with doubt. They say they believe in the Messiah, but they have no experience or fruit that you can actually hold on to to show that they do believe the Messiah. There's no action there. You follow me? In other words, there's nothing about their life that you can actually look at and say, you know what? I can eat off that right there. I can believe that because that's the way that they are. I can see the fruit of them really truly having a relationship with the Messiah. But most of these people that are full of doubt and unbelief have no relationship whatsoever. Oh, it's only men or sin. <clears throat> All right, this ministry. 1 Corinthians 4, 1, when Paul was speaking to the set-apart people in Corinth, he says this, Therefore, sin, we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. In other words, we don't lose heart. You see, you thought life was hard. Wait till you become an Israelite. That's really hard. See, because when you're in life, you're born in sin, shaping in iniquity, and all you have is the oppression of life. And this, you got to fight on two fronts. Hallelujah. Going to the scripture in the same passage right here, version to give clarity, but I renounce the secret ways of shame. Not walking in craftiness, nor falsifying the word of Elohim, but by the manifestation of truth, recommending ourselves to every human conscience in the sight of Elohim. And indeed, if the good news have been veiled, it is veiled in those who are what? Perishing. In other words, you can't understand what I'm saying? Then that, that tells me that you are perishing. You follow me? In whom the God of this world have blinded the what? The minds. Not the eyes, but the minds. So, so if sometimes you find yourself saying, I can't see why I don't understand it that way. That's because that part of your mind is blinded. And usually when you're blind, you're blind because of your own wisdom. Of them which believe not, lest, they, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of Yah, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Yahshua, the Messiah, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Now, we got to ask ourselves a question. We just read about this deception and this, this blindness that's going on. Do angels of light or ministers of righteousness corrupt men's morals? Or do they entice them? Do they entice and tempt them to commit acts of violence or crime? See, anytime you're doing something, it's because of a temptation. Anytime you're going contrary to what you know the law of morality, the law of civility, or let's just go ahead and say the law of righteousness. When you're tempted to do something, it's only because of suggestions that are submitted to your mind. And instead of casting them down, a lot of times they keep getting submitted, you remain passive, the devil keeps on submitting them until you finally yield to them. That's because you were enticed because rather than actually becoming and taking a proactive position and doing something about it, you know, like casting down a thought or imagination, right, even if you don't know, even if it don't make sense, cast it down. Let's don't sit there passively. But when you continually keep entertaining over and over and over the same thought, the same temptation. So what the devil does, he plants it in your mind. After listening to that so many times and so-called ignoring it, then it becomes one with you and becomes a feeling in your body. You know how you lie. You Instead of being led by the spirit, you led by feelings. That's how you respond to the majority of things, by how you feel. That's why I always people, even in this society, always ask you, how you feel about this? What does that got to do with anything? But that's the culture that we live in. Every, you find yourself even saying, how you feel about this? Well, I, I, where's the book of feelings? You understand what I mean? And that's how the enemy does. When you watch people, especially yourselves, you can see and hear at any given time who they are serving. Now, we're in the hour of the power of darkness, just like Christ was, and he said in Luke twenty-two fifty-two, 52. And Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders, which were come to him, be ye come out as against a thief with swords and shaves. When I was daily with you in the temple. You stretched forth no hands against me. But this is your what? Power and the power of darkness. Remember, Christ lived 30 years. Nothing took place, nothing. We have a record recording the last three years of his life. And, and all of a sudden, they, 
He was in the temple all the time. Never laid hands on him, but all of a sudden, this one particular point in time, now they were bold enough to go and to seek his life. Why? Because Satan was operating through them. To do what the thief does, which is what? Steal, kill, and to destroy. Is that right? 1 Corinthians 1, 13. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? In other words, there's not no four or five different messages or four or five different ways to believe, saints. There's only one. Man of sin. Man of sin. The scriptures warn us about a man of sin that's going to come and he's going to be an emulator. He's going to try to do whatever he can to fabricate the life of the Messiah as close as possible. The whole world is already ripe for it. Christianity is going to be, it's the mystery religion of Babylon that he's going to use to actually facilitate this deception. And then he's going to get all these religious people. You follow me? Second Thessalonians 2 1 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our master Yahshua, a Messiah, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not so soon shaken in what? So everything today, every mode of communication is all about to shake you up here in your mind, to cast doubt, especially against the word. All right? To cast doubt against the way. I mean, people are so profound today, as soon as somebody even begins to think about keeping the commandments, they only have to be part of straightway. Satan has the world condition to say, you're in a cult. Don't care who it is. As soon as you start talking about keeping these commandments, the first in, in accusation is cult, 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 cult. Uh, and people that say that can't even define it. So what Satan always trying to do is shake your mind. Or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us. Paul said, this ain't come from us. So you have people that's trying to shake, persuade your mind, either by spirit or letter, and something come from us. He had already given the warning. As the day of Christ is at what? Hand. Every time we turn around today, somebody's prophesying the end of the world. We've been fighting that for the last 10 years consistently. Every year, end of the world. Now, what's the new one this year? September the 21st? Is that the new one? The 23rd, September 23rd, that's the new one. Just like a few years ago, that was another one. That's always, always something, always, always something, but no revelation. No re and all of them, they miss it every time. Oh, we, oh, well, you know, uh, blood, blood red moons. Let me tell you the truth, a lot of these merchandises and hulksters, they know how stupid you are and how religious you are. Mm -hmm. Because they know your heart constituted for the love of Christ. So they play on that. And they get you to bow off into the merchandise that they're selling because they know you want to be right with y'all. And they use that to take advantage of you. That's what they do. So just like it was in Paul's day when he was up here writing his letters to Thessalonica, we got the same thing still going on today. Everybody's still talking about the day of Christ is at hand. Yeah, it's at hand. We're near today than when they were. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a what? Falling away first. Now, if anybody falls away, who admits it? Huh? And that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is what? Called of Yah, so that is worship, so that he as Yah sitteth in the temple of Yah, Showing himself that he is what? Yah. For the mystery of iniquity. Skip it down to the seventh verse. For the mystery of iniquity, it's already working. It was working 2,000 years ago. You better believe it's working today. Only he who now led will let into it, he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Messiah shall consume. Now we know that this is at the end time. See, it's explaining to us what's getting ready to take place, what's happening, and then here's the end time judgment of it. All in one letter. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Messiah shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. If we believe in the book of Huzum, Revelations, we know what's already taking place here, right? So you got two or three different verses all talking about a particular setting, time frame, and culminating in the destruction of the earth. Even him or the wicked one. Even him who's coming is after working to Satan with all 
power and signs and what? Because that's the only way you're going to get people today. That's the only way. You're going to get people to believe. That's why you need to have this word in you. You know how many people that carry this Bible go to church all the time? I mean, good, so-called good in heart, but their heart is deceived. And they have no comprehension or understanding of the book of Revelation at all. And when this statue all of a sudden receives life, and it starts moving around, talking and carrying on and stuff, these people are automatically going to, they setting up, they've been set up right now. I told you, the great tribulation message that these people preaching or the rapture of the church is one of the most deceptive, deceitful messages. And I've been saying this for a long time, that there is. Because you got people, they'll call it fiction, right? And they'll present all these books about the get, catching away. What's the name of the book? Left Behind series. Selling millions upon millions of dollars. Now guess what? They've read that book so much that now they look at the Bible based on what that book says. Yes, sir. That's the mistake that a lot of you make. You nosy in your research. You rather go see what second and third dairy scholars got to say rather than the primary scholars themselves. And when you read and approach this book, you approach this book based on what you have read from what somebody else has written after the fact rather than those of the eyewitness account. So what's going to happen? They're going to call the Bible a lie when the rapture of the church don't take place like they thought it was. The greatest deception ever, ever been perpetuated on man. Because only the religious people care about Going to heaven, being called away, huh? And when they gonna find out that their moment in the twinkle of an eye ain't until the last trump sound, not before the trump sound, and they still here on this earth and all this hell and carnage is taking place, they gonna say, you know what? These pastors, preachers, teach they're all false prophets, all lies, and then the man of sin shows up with all lying signs powers and line wonders proclaiming himself to be Yah and they're going to reverse the whole story and the whole story is going to suit him that's why the so called Jews today can't accept the Messiah but they will accept this man of sin when he comes that's why these people who are deceived talking about David as the Messiah and stuff like this they're going to call the anti-Messiah the Messiah because they so against him you already got this thing figured out. He going to come up on the scene doing the miracles and the workings of Christ. And then those of us, the very elect who know, we're going to be pointing out that's the devil. They call us the devil today. What are they going to call us then? That's why the word says the day is coming when they're going to kill you. And they think they're going to do your service. Let me tell you something, all this removing of the statue and all this other stuff, all these are just stepping stones and preludes for attack on every single thing. We want to create this neutral society that one day is going to become a, against the law, just like in China, to even have a Bible in your hands. That's why you better get this word in your heart. Because everything that is going on today is only pointing towards the eradication of the Bible in society. Y'all hearing it? Yes, sir. And with all deceitfulness and unrighteous in them that perish. Look, it's telling you that there are some people that are deceived in unrighteousness in them that do what? Because they receive not the love of the truth. See, that time Messiah is already here. There are people they don't even believe the Messiah has even come. That they might be saved. So you receive the love of the truth so you might be what? Saved? For this cause, y'all should send them a strong delusion that they should believe a what? Wow. And sometimes it don't even take that much of a delusion to even get you to believe. He's after the very elect. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Can you imagine having pleasure in doing evil? 
Can you imagine that? You don't want nobody to lie on you, but you lie on everybody. And you love doing it. You're toying around and playing with the minds of men, persuading them as an evil agent of Satan. But you are having pleasure in unrighteousness. Last days, 1 Timothy 4, 1, that the Spirit is speaking expressed that in the latter times that some are going to depart from the what? Faith. Giving heed to what kind of spirits? You think them spirits are not here today? And what else? Doctrines of who? A doctrine of devil is King David is the Messiah. The writings of Paul are false. Doctrine of the devil, you receive the Holy Spirit when you keep the commandments. Doctrine of the devil, the commandments are done away with. Doctrine of the devils, we are not under the law but under grace. Doctrine of the devils, you now have to receive the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues, the Spirit of Yah give the utterance. Doctrine of the devils, you do not have to live holy and set apart. Doctrine of the devils, you cannot cast out devils and set people free in Jesus' name. Doctrine of the devils, the name of Jesus is Zeus. There's a lot of doctrines of devils. All of them just tore around and sway your mind. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Speaking lies. They're hypocrites. Some of the greatest indictments is, is when you tell the truth about yourself to others and blame others for where you are. Yeah. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidden to marry. Oh, there's America. And commanded to abstain from meats which Yah created to be received. Of them which uh, with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth for every creature of Yah is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. What creature did Yah create to be received? There it is. You can't know that without the law. You're not going to know it because of letters. So as a doctrine of devil when it tells you that every creature. That's what they say. Look. Forbidden to marry, commanded to abstain from meats which Yah created. No, that's the key. Yah created. Yah hath created to be re. And the only way you're going to find it out, you got to go back to the instructions. The law. All right? You got to go back over here to find out what it was. For it is sanctified by the word of Yah in prayer. Yeah, the ones that are received. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Yahshua, Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto you has attained. But refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise yourself rather unto what? That's kind of exercise you need to do. Now, I mean, how much exercise I mean you doing in that? Hmm? How much time do you spend exercising in that? This kind. Elias. Brother saying get Mark. Chapter 9. And read verses 2 through 13. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. In other words, we're in an age and a time of deception. The enemy, he really don't truly care nothing about you. He just care about deceiving you. It's an all out assault against y'all's kingdom. And he knows he has to uh, get your mind. Attack your mind. And persuade you and seduce you in order to believe something that is a lie so that that lie becomes the truth to you. Then you find yourself opposed against Yah's kingdom. You can always discern if you're serving something right or wrong based on the love, the joy, and the peace. Right. Or the fruit of the spirit. If you're missing those, those values, you're missing those fruits right there, then you know what you're in. is not. There's a false sense of fruit too. You hear me? You can be doing evil and, and, and it makes you feel good. That's true. But just like if you ever took that first hit of that crack pipe and you thought it was good, boy, it ain't until the second, third time you get back there you find yourself bound. It's meant to destroy you. Meth is dangerous. You don't believe me? Look what it's doing to people's lives. Look what it's doing to their bodies. There has got to be some type of powerful spirit to get somebody to, to actually smoke some Drano or snort some Drano and it's got them keeping coming back. 
That's some powerful stuff in there. What is going on really in this world? I want to tell you the truth of what's really going on. The devil has got people so deceived today in the time that we're living in that people are really truly without even knowing it seeking for Yah's peace. But the devil is there to fabricate a peace for them. Because they want love, joy, and peace to be in their lives, but they don't want to change. They want peace and happiness, but they don't want to conform to Yah's image and get with his program. They want a king in the afterlife, but they don't want no king in this life. As the old saying go, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And the enemy is playing on that. Knowing full well that that's what you want. Read, bro, saying. And after six days, mm -hmm. Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John. Now we know that this is the account of the Mount of Transfiguration. Is that right? Read on. And leadeth them up unto a high mountain Come on. by themselves. Mm -hmm. And he was transfigured before them. Y'all hear that? He was what? Transfigured. Transfigured before him. Okay, then we got people trying to dispute that account today, but yet they wasn't there with Peter, James, and John. We have the writers of Peter, James, and John. They wasn't there. So who you going to believe? That's why I keep telling you. If you're finding it a hard time believing these things in the word, then, you know, for instance, I can preach the gospel message of Christ right now. And no matter if you've been saved 20 days or 20 years, it still has the same impact. It still carries a lot of power and weight. Just that message alone. This is the message that the enemy is trying to do everything he can to distort and pollute to make sure that the world don't ever hear it. Because this work, the way this spirit is working, this seducing spirit is working in his time is it does not want you to happily feel after him. Because he wants you to be filled with wrath, filled with clamor, filled with bitterness, filled with hatred. And he wants you to think that's all that this world has to offer. Are y'all hear me? Read on. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow. So as no fool on earth can wipe them. And there appeared unto them Elias and Moses. And they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good. Now wait a minute. Some people said, that wasn't Elias, that wasn't Moses. Well, who are you going to believe? You're going to believe the first century? You're going to believe the authors in this? Credible authors? Or are you going to believe these people who have an opinion? See, because if you're going to believe what they're saying, when they said they seen Elias and Moses, are you following me? Because we know that y'all buried Moses because it's what the Torah said. Isn't that right? So guess what? Then that goes against all this soul sleep then. Your body in the grave, but your spirit ain't, which Paul clearly told you in Corinthians. Oh, I'm going to search it out. Well, you're going to search death grave. Hell, grave. You're going to search yourself right off in unbelief. That's why I say pay attention to function. What's Moses doing here then? Y'all hear that? If he's in the grave. Waiting for his resurrection. Or is he he's taking a nap? Read. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master. Mm-hmm. It is good for us to be here. And, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moshe, and one for Elias. I, I guarantee you, y'all sure was saying where we're going to get the build material from, because right now you ain't building nothing. <laughs> that was a funny ha-ha. Anyway, come on. For he was not what, what to say, for they were so afraid. They were so what? Afraid. Come on. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them. Mm -hmm. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. And people get stuck on son. Stuck on son. Yeah. Yah's a spirit. Are you following me? Y'all prepared a body to dwell in. You following me? 
That's what y'all did. When that spirit descended upon Jesus, there was y'all. The fullness of him come in and the power came in. And Yah gave the son the Ruach to give to us. Yeah. Yahshua at any given time, even though he had all of Yah in him, he could have reneged and not did any of that. He had a free will just like you did. Except he had his eyes so constituted on the prize, unlike you. You get distracted. See, if it wasn't for him living a sinless life, we would still be dead in ours. Christ was tempted to be a homosexual. But he overcame it. Never did it. You know how he overcame it? He cast down the thought when it came. Oh, no, he didn't pass down. The Bible said he was tempted in all points. Yet without sin. Every temptation that you ever received, Christ already overcame it to give you a way of escape. So you don't have an excuse to set up and relish. All you have to do is take the way of escape and say, thank you, Jesus. That's all he's looking for. Does that make sense? Read on. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus, only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things we, they had seen. Y'all hear that? Don't you tell nobody what you just seen. And look what the word says. Till the Son of Man were, take, were risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves. Hold on. What is he talking about? See, they, at this time, they had no clue that the, that the Messiah had come to be killed and be risen from the dead. That's why it says, and they kept this saying. Read. With themselves, questioning one with another, what was the rising from the dead should mean? See what I mean? They didn't know. They were living this thing. <laughs> what is he talking about? Until the Son of Man be risen from the dead? Notice, they're not talking to everybody, but they're speaking among themselves. Man, you figure that thing out yet? What is he talking about, man? Risen from the dead? I don't know, man. What is that about? All you have to do is read the account in context. Because remember, they were thinking that, oh, man, we got a winner here. For sure, we're getting ready to overthrow the Romans now. Look at it. The Romans are finished. And when he was impaled on that tree and it was over with, they was like, all hope is lost. It's all gone because they think that Christ came to defeat the Romans when he came to defeat the thing that is really destroying you. Everybody now thinking that we're supposed to rise up and fight the government. We ain't supposed to rise up and fight the government. We got to fight the government of Satan that's constantly tempting us. There's a time all the governments of this world is going to be put down. But God said he is going to do that himself. Go out there and fight the government. Leave the government alone. You need to try to fight what's destroying and killing you. The same thing that always put us in perpetual captivity. Your sin. So now, oh grave, where's your victory? Oh death, where's your sting? Where is it now? Because he overcame it and set us all free from it. If, if we choose to walk in it, some of us choose not to. Some of us got a love affair with death. You haven't noticed that the only thing death wants from you? Death. That's death. Death only got one, one thing you doing, kill it. See how smart I am. Read on. And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elias must first come? Why is it that the what the scribes say Elias must what first, first come? Read on. And he answered 
and told them, Elias verily cometh first and restoreth all things. Elias is going to come first and do what? Restore, Restore all, all things. Come on. And how is it, and how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. But I say unto you, that Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Y'all hear that? As it is written of him. The Elias thing. Matthew eleven twelve. For the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violent and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. They all prophesied until what? All the law and all the prophets prophesied until John. There ain't no more adding to the law. Y'all hear me? I'm going to go real, real slow. Because we got a lot of false prophets today. Am I saying there ain't no prophets? No, but why is all the prophets that prophets prophesying is going on today and prophesying of a better you or you're going to prophesy of a house that's going to put you in debt? Yeah. We're fools. For all the prophets and the Lord. prophesied until John. and if you will receive it, this is which was for to come. Who? John was. He that have ears, let him hear. Everybody still waiting on the lines. It's in there written right there. A live coming. What's that? See, you got to do away with this New Testament and the square with your theology. Then they understood how that he bade him not to be aware of the leaven of the left bread, but of the doctrine of the what? Pharisees and Sadducees. And when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea of Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John. So you get people, they see, the Bible preach reincarnation. Help me, Father. John the Baptist, some Elias, and other Jeremiah's or one of the prophets. Then the Messiah said, he said to them, but whom say you that I am? But Simon, Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living Yah. See, people had an opinions of who they thought Christ was. And Yahshua answered and said unto him, Blessed are thou, Simon, but Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. For I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my assembly, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Don't you like to have the keys too? Yes, sir. Well, look what he said the keys were. And whosoever and whatsoever you shall bind on what? Earth, Earth shall be bound in what? Yes. So guess what? Satan has got to come up with doctrines to stop you from doing that. Yes, because if you start doing it, you're going to be effective against his kingdom. Right. Sorry, but that's what Christ says is one of the keys. Yes, Binding and loosening. So he's got to give you theology. He's got to get you to adopt a hands-off attitude against spiritual warfare. He's got to make you non-existent to make sure that you're no threat to his kingdom. And then sometimes he just wear you out in life to where you get so much that you don't even want to bind loose no more. All you want is just be bound. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose and what? You don't never know how that's working until you do it. But since we're so logical today, we can't fathom ourselves doing nothing like that because it makes no natural sense to us. Then charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Yahshua the Christ. You mean tell me, don't tell nobody he's the Christ? Pick up verse 13, brother, same, same book. I mean, verse 14 and read on. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. Y'all hear that? 
Yahshua was away, he came to his disciples, and that's what people, that's what people do with y'all. They found you part of straightway, and the first thing they want to do is corner you and ask you a bunch of questions. They have an opportunity to ask me all the time, but they don't ever want to ask me. That's kind of like that Zach Bauer and stuff, man. He had all the opportunity in the world. When I went out there and stayed a whole week with him to, to question me and ask me all kind of questions, didn't want to do it. Waited until Elder Mitchell and Brother Josh got up there and didn't want to question him. And then there was a sister that already lives there that actually set him straight and made him mad. Isn't that something? Why well, they don't want to ask me questions? I'm a very civil man. Ain't I civil? No, I practice civility. And I dignify. I know how to act. <laughs> Read on. <laughs> and straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And he asked the scribes, why are you questioning my disciples? Read on. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought a, unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he formeth and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to the disciples that they should cast him off, and they could not. And they could what? They could not. They, there's a reason why they couldn't. Read. He answered him and saith, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How, how long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tore him, and he fell on the ground and walled. Notice, this is this kind. Read on. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since he came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oftentimes it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Master, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. When Jesus saw the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying to him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him. Y'all hearing that? He rebuked the foul spirit. He didn't counsel with it, didn't negotiate with it. He rebuked it. Notice, a foul spirit. Read on. I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and, and rent him sore and came out of him. And it's amazing. We're dealing with all these people today, yet nobody has any spirits. You're seeing all this control, all these people being controlled by Satan, yet nobody has spirits. Read on. And he was one as was dead, insomuch that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he rose. And when he was come into his, the house, his disciples asked him privately, why, why could we cast him not? Why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind, the, what, what, what kind? This kind, read on, can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and Fasting. There are spirits that can't come out unless you actually prayed up and fasted up. That's what he's telling you. Now, Yahshua said we're going to receive power. Did he not say that? But power has to be built up by your dedication to the Father. You're not just going to go say a bunch of words and something's going to happen. Your life has to reflect it in order for Shemaim to hear you. Does that make any sense? You finish? By this, all men shall know that you are my disciples if you have what kind of love for what? And what do people keep talking about when they see the ministry? None of the love. Satan has ministers. Do you know how to discern them? Do you know who they are? All you have to do is watch what they say 
and what they do. It tells you who his ministers are. Hallelujah. Let us stand. I am most high, Abba Yah. We thank you for these sins. Pray these truths sink deep down in our hearts. Magnificent name of Yahshua to bring forth fruits in Yahshua's name. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, King coming. Uh oh, look at him looking.